So today I'm going to paint a Primaris Infiltrator. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what chapter or faction he's going to be painted yet, but I'm going to start with the stuff that's universal to black armor and then work out the details later. So I'm going to use a technique for painting black armor, which I learned from, if you're watching uh, in the Facebook group, then you know him, David Rouse. If you're watching on YouTube, there's a guy named David Rouse somewhere in South Georgia, and he knows how to paint black armor. And I'm about to use that technique. So I'm going to start with Skaven Blight Dinge. It's a great gray paint from Citadel. And I'm going to take a brush like this. A wedge brush, I guess Bob Ross would call that. And I'm just going to get some paint on it. I'm going to wipe most of it off, and I'm going to use this brush to dry brush this gray color onto the skin. Um, this gray is sort of a brownish gray, I guess, a warm gray, you'd say. Um, so it's, it's going to help quite a bit with highlighting this black. So I'm just going to go and dry brush over everything that's going to end up being black. So all over the armor, making sure to get all over everything. Just get some more, a little bit more paint. And just keep going. Doesn't really matter which way you go on the miniature. Just so long as you get this gray all over everything that's going to be black. Don't break his antenna off like I almost did just then. That's a key. You generally want to avoid breaking your miniature's mid-paint job. Alright. Just going to do this. Go back over this one more time. Alrighty. So now that he's completely dry brushed, I'm not sure how much that actually shows up on camera, but trust me, he looks different. Then I'm going to take some Null Noil, and I'm just going to cover the whole model in this. Well, all the parts of the armor anyway. This is straight over the uh, dry brush we just did. Let's find the brush I need here. And I'm just going to go over everything. Just making sure to get, get it in all the recesses. And this will... Oh, sorry, not on camera. <laughs> this will help to bring out that gray a little bit. Um, as well as darkening down the shadows of the black, even though it was already black, this will this will help it help show a little bit more contrast between the dry brush and the main color. It also will remove the finish. I primed this guy uh, black with a P3 P3 primer, and the finish of spray paint is always different than the finish of brush on paint. And it can look quite noticeable if you leave bare spray paint on a miniature. So this will also help get rid of that. So we don't have brush on painted finish on some areas and spray paint finish on other areas. Just going to make sure I've got the whole thing covered. And get in there and the backpack here. Okay. All right. So that, I think I've got it all there. Um, I'm just going to let that dry. You could dry this with a hair dryer or just let it sit. Um, in this case, I'm just going to let it sit and I'm going to paint the bolter while it dries. So to start with the bolter, I'm going to start with <laughs> uh, Grey Knight Steel. You're a couple days late, Stephen. Although you entered both, so I guess you're not late. You're just you're just doing it again. <laughs> this is going to become a thing. People are just going to be sending that message in every live stream. Um, so I'm just going to coat the whole bolter with this Grey Knight steel. Uh, the 
there are going to be other colors on this bolter. But I don't know exactly where I want those other colors yet. So painting the whole thing in this color will mean that no matter what I decide later, there'll be silver where I decide to not paint. And so I won't have to go back and repaint anything. At least that's the plan. So, and this guy has about 12 scopes on his gun. So I gotta make sure to paint them too. We'll come back in with a with a different color of black probably and repaint some of them. The problem, or one of the problems anyway, with uh, black armor on things is that black is so often a good detail or little bit highlight or color rather. Um, and so when your armor is black, you have to, you can use the same color as your armor, but I don't think you should. Um, I think the armor should be the only color or the only thing that is painted that color. Um, so you have to kind of think about how you can make things that you would normally want to paint black, how you can paint them black. In this case, we're going to use a slightly off black, um, almost a dark gray to paint them so that they will stand out from the armor. Make sure to coat the whole bolter here. And then I think I'm also going to do his antenna while I'm here. All three of them. Being careful not to get any silver on the black helmet. Just like that. This guy has three antenna and three scopes. He is he's looking for exactitude in all his endeavors. Not sure what he's doing with them all, but you know, whatever. And then after I paint these antenna, I'm just gonna look around, see if there's anything else that needs silver. Um, let's see. So I could paint his grenade silver. Uh, and I think I will. I'll paint his grenade silver. We can always come back with another color later and highlight them up if we need to. But for now, I will paint them in a silver. Silver is a color that takes contrast paint very well. So that could be a, an easy solution. Just come back and throw some contrast paint on the, on the grenades. I'm also going to paint this little clip that's holding the grenades on. And he's got another one hiding down here. Alrighty. So then, let's see. Does anything else need to be silver? I don't think so. Just going to make sure I got all of this. Okay. I think that's probably good on the silver. And the Nuln Oil is mostly dry now. It's still wet in a couple places, as you can see. So we're not quite going to move on to details on that yet, just in case. Um, but if I take a look at the straps and belts, it's basically dry everywhere on there. So I'll do those real quick. For that, I'm going to use the greatest brown that has ever been made. Gorthor Brown. I'm just going to do this on all the belts and pouches that he's got. And he's got a fair few of them. He's got a pouch here on his chest. Make sure to get every side of that and I'll do the little strap that's holding it on at the same time. I'll just get the side of this. Alrighty, and then I'll get his actual belt in here. And his pistol holster. Just 
just leaving the the little spot in there that shows his bolter or his bolt pistol. I'm gonna leave that black just to show some depth. We'll go over this pouch. And then make sure to get the bottoms of the pouches. I'm just going to go back over this real quick with a second layer. Not completely covered. And then I'm going to do the front of his bolter, or his bolt pistol holster rather. Alrighty. And then the rest of his belt. Oh, and he's got one more pouch over here. Guy has a lot of pouches. It's a lot of pouches. Just gonna cover this pouch on camera. Try to get it on camera. <laughs> Moved my camera slightly today, so I gotta get used to my new new camera location. Just gonna get the underside of this pouch. The back side of that pouch, and then I think we're good on the pouches. All right, so then we'll just go and inspect the null oil and it does appear to be dry almost everywhere. So we're gonna move on to highlighting the armor. The first thing we're gonna do is get some corn red. We're gonna base coat everywhere that we need to be red. So I'm gonna start with his shoulder pad trim here. This is gonna be red. Make sure to get a nice smooth coat on the whole shoulder pad. And then we need to start thinking about what else is going to be red. The bolter is going to be red today. At least the casing of the bolter is. And probably something on his backpack will be red also. I haven't quite decided yet. Um, we'll come back to that. I'm just going to finish up the trim on his shoulder pad. And we'll think about the backpack as we paint the bolter. Alright, and then just going to do the casing of the bolter here in red. Making sure not to get any red on places we don't want it. And then get the front of the bolter here. Good. This boulder is quite tricky to paint. It's got many details on it, but we'll get there eventually. All right, then I'm going to do the back of the casing back here. A little bit more up in there. And then just across there. Alright, I think that's good. Just going to put a little bit more here. Smooth that out a little bit. Alrighty. Then we're going to get our very tiny brush. Let's see if I can get this to focus on camera. Nope, it's deciding to pick... There we go. There it is. That brush. 
Now we're gonna do some checkerboard. Let's see if I can freehand a checkerboard on stream today. So I'm gonna do it on this kneecap. And I'm just gonna start, gonna grab the, at least as close to the middle as possible, with this red here. Still using the corn red. Just gonna come straight down. And then I'm gonna go the other way. Just like that. If the camera wants to pick that up, yep. <laughs> And then I'm going to bisect each of those lines with a line. So I'm going to come down here like this. And then I'm going to come down here on the same, same thing on the other side. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the top and the bottom. Oh, nope, I'm going to get it all over the black instead. How about that? That sounds like a plan. Do that. And these do not have to be full weight lines. Um, I'm going to clean them up later so they can be they can be sketched on. Not a problem. Just going to finish this line here. All right, so there's this beginnings of our checkerboard. Now we're just going to go and fill every other one in, as you might have guessed. Um, first, I'm just going to see if I can get that red dot off my black armor. I might be able to. We'll see. It may have dried too much already. Yep, it did. Okay, not a problem. So I'm just going to, I guess I'll show you how to clean this black up. Um, if you want to clean this black up, you use Corvus Black. Slightly lighter black than uh, Abdon. And you just come in and coat that dot right over. And I try to turn it into a highlight usually when I mess it up. And that'll blend right into the rest of the black, as you can see. Not a problem. You just want to not use your brightest, or your darkest black, rather. Because that will stand out against this finish that you've applied to this model. So now I'm just going to go in and I'm going to fill in every other box here. And I'm just deciding where I want my red. So I'm going to start my red down here on this box, or this partial box. And I'm just going to cover it with a pretty thin layer there. And then work my way up. This one will be next. Just want to go very slowly so as to not mess up your nice lines that you drew. And the way I decide, because obviously a checkerboard, every every uh, square I'm painting red could equally be black. The way I decide on that is wherever I've gone too heavy on a line into a box, that's where I'm going to put the red color because then it will cover that mistake I made. So I'm just going to finish this box pattern here. Miss that corner. And then just like with the red on the black armor, I'm going to come back and clean it up with a little bit of Corvus Black. Doesn't look like we'll need too much cleanup on this one. Especially because it is a checkerboard on a knee pad. It doesn't have to be perfect. No one is going to be looking at it that closely. The only thing you want to be really careful of is to not pick the wrong box when you're filling in your pattern. That can make you struggle. All right, so there that there's that filled in. But if you notice, it looks like you can tell what we did because the boxes 
overlap slightly. What I mean by that is this box here in the middle overlaps into the area where that box is. So that doesn't that's not what a checkerboard looks like. Checkerboards are separated by a zero width line effectively. So I'm gonna come in again with my Corvus Black, the same thing I cleaned up the error with earlier. And I'm just gonna put, just gonna make these black boxes a tiny bit bigger. So I'm just gonna come down on the side here, do that, same thing up here. And then just do that in every box effectively. And then make sure this box down here is well defined. This one that's at the very bottom. That one looks good. I'm just going to go up here to this top one and define it a little bit more. Good. This one here is looking a little wonky, so we'll define it. And get this one a tiny bit more. It's still looking a little wonky. There we go. All right. So there's our finished checkerboard. We might come back and highlight it when we highlight the rest of our red, but you don't need to. It's a checkerboard on a knee pad. It's as good as it needs, really needs to be. So I think then I will apply some null oil to the bolter. Same stuff I applied to the gun or to the armor earlier, rather. Just gonna completely cover it red and all. All the silver, all the red. And I'm actually going to cover the uh, pouches we did earlier at the same time. Just completely cover this here. this pouch and if some runs over on the armor it's not a big deal because this is the color we put on the armor earlier just get it all over these pouches here I usually try to blend it in like you see, saw me do just there if I get some on a plate of armor I just put it all over that plate of armor just so there's no harsh line that occurs probably wouldn't occur with this uh, with null oil, but just in case it doesn't hurt, I'm gonna get some on the antennas also. Antennas, antenna. I think the I think the plural of antenna is antenna, but whatever. All right, so there's that. Then what shall we do next? Still need probably some red on this backpack somewhere. I think I'm just going to make, so I'm going back to the corn red now, and I'm just going to make this backpack piece right in the middle here, make this black, I mean red, sorry, change it from black to red. Then as soon as this dries... We'll be ready to highlight the red. And so while that dries, I'm going to do a couple little details. So first I'm going to take Retributor Gold. Or is it Retributor Gold? And I'm going to do the symbol on his chest. It's just a little skull and crossbones peeking out behind his bolter here. Just going to touch the top of that with this color. Just like that. Just check to make sure nothing else needs to be gold. I think that's really the only detail on him like that. And that is correct. Okay. So I'm going to take some Wraith Bone. Wraith Bone. And I'm going to do the parchment part of his purity seal in this color. Just 
There's some wet null oil still there, so I'm being careful not to hit that. And then for the wax of his purity seal, because our our armor highlight color is already a dark red, doesn't serve us really to do a red um, in that area. So I think instead we're gonna do a purple. And we're gonna start light, because we're gonna shade it down. So we're gonna start with Gene Steeler purple. I'm just gonna do the wax on the purity seal in this color, and we'll come back and put some uh, wash over this so it won't be as bright as this. Otherwise, I would wanna start with a much darker color normally. Just like that, good. All right, and then our null oil is still drying, but I think we can move to our uh, metal highlight color, which is gonna be Corvus Black. And I'm just going to put this in a couple places. So I'm gonna put it, actually, before I do that, I'm gonna get some of this collecting null oil here with my just a wet brush and pull it out of there. Just a little too much hanging out in a couple places. All right, now we're gonna go back to the Corvus Black and I'm just gonna do a couple spots of each scope in this color. Um, I don't know if, I'm sure in the 41st millennium, they've probably invented something higher fidelity than plastic, but that sort of material is what I'm imagining on these scopes. I'm gonna leave part of the silver though, because part of it in my mind would still be metal. But you don't want three metal scopes hanging off the end of your gun. It would make it, even for a space marine, I feel like that would affect your accuracy. So then for this one, I'm just gonna get this part right here. And the eyepiece on this one. Doesn't really make sense in my mind why Space Marine has an eyepiece on his scope, why he even has a scope at all. I would think it would all be in his eye lenses and all that technology in his helmet, but maybe it's in case he pulls his helmet off in the middle of combat, like an idiot. All right, so from there, I think we'll move to highlighting the red. I'm gonna highlight the red with Mephiston Red. So for the shoulder pad and the gun, it's super easy. I'm just gonna highlight along the edges here. Just like that and get this edge here. And then the edge between the silver and red part. Just being very careful because I do not want to hit the silver. Same thing over here. Like that. And then up top, flip them around. Do the same thing on this side. And then for the shoulder pad, I'm just gonna get the, the side of my brush and go along the edges here of the shoulder pad. And then we're almost ready to do a freehand on the shoulder pad. And as I talked about in an earlier episode, I think it was, I think it was my bringing battle ready to parade ready video. Um, how you wanna break down Freehands into their sub shapes. That's the same thing we're gonna do here. We'll go through that in just a second. First, I'm just highlighting the backpack. So I'm just getting a lighter red line on each side of this. Just like that. And then on the kneecap, I'm just gonna take this color and I'm just gonna put a line on the top of each checker. Just like that.
doesn't have to be a ton of paint or anything just a little bit so that it shows there is some variation there and then maybe just a dot on that one a dot on that one there you go and there's that highlighted so that's the red highlighted now I'm gonna quickly highlight actually no I'm gonna do his face now so for his face I'm gonna use Mechanica Standard Gray. I'm going to paint some of the details in. I'm actually going to do this all over him. Um, so I'll start here. I'm going to get these two little buttons on the side of his wrist here. Get those in gray. More importantly though, on his face, I'm going to do this thing around his rebreather or mouth, whatever you call this thing. And then I'm going to do his, what look like air filters here. Just get some more paint here. Okay, there's that. And then I'm also at the same time going to highlight the, the top half of him with this color with an edge highlight. Not every edge is going to get highlighted, but some of them are. Um, the dry brush will do most of the work for us that we did earlier, but near the top of the miniature where most people will be looking, we are going to do a slight edge highlight with this different color. And it does not have to be the entire edge. Like I said, I'm just going to do bits of each edge. I'll do the round part of this shoulder pad here. Just like that. And then I might do his... Oh, there's a bit of silver right there. Alright, so we're going <laughs> to... Because there's a bit of silver there, we're going to fix that real quick. We're just going to edge highlight it. Right through there. Look, it was on purpose. We did it. And then we're just going to go down his hand right here, like that. And honestly, that's probably fine, but I'm just going to give his elbow a little highlight right here. His elbow pad, rather. Just like that. Just so there's a couple lines up there. And then I'm going to do the same thing on his tactical scopes here. Just going to do an edge on the front of each one. And then one on the back. And then, just like I did these little buttons on his wrist, or his forearm, I'm going to go and make sure anything else like that is the same color. So I'll do that there. Do these here. Same on this side. And then I'll get the buttons on his gun. I don't know if they're actually buttons. I don't know why you'd have a button on a gun right here, but... I don't know what else they'd be at the same time, so there you go. They're going to be gray now. Okay. So then we just have his eyeballs and I think the free hand on his shoulder, and then we might do some extra contrasting in a second. So we're going to take Vampiric Highlight. Um, I have a guy who writes all my... I have a guy. His name is actually Guy. So I literally have a guy who writes down all the paint colors I use. And every time I use, I include Vampiric Highlight in a stream, he me he says it's because I'm a Twilight fan. I did recently learn there's a new Twilight book. I had no idea. However, I wouldn't consider myself a fan. But if the stats guy, as I'm going to call him, because it sounds cool to have a stats guy, if he wants to say it, then by all means. So I'm just going to use this color to do his eyes. I'm just kind of trying to cover not the whole eye lens, just get a little bit in the middle there because I don't want to do a lot of work on these eyeballs, so I'm just going to do that. Eye lenses rather than eyeballs, whatever. And do the same thing on the other side. Just being very careful. And then my paint dries on the end of my brush and I can't do it. Awesome. So get some more paint on your brush when that happens. And try again. That's better. 
This one's a little more defined than that one, so we'll just come back to this one. Add a little more. Wonderful. He's got nice eyeballs. It'll work. All right, then we're going to do the free hand. And like I said at the beginning of the stream, I didn't know exactly what chapter this was going to be. However, if you're a lore fanatic, you may have already picked up on it. There's a red checkerboard on his uh, on his knee pad here. So, of course, he's going to be a Dark Angel. So I'm going to freehand the Dark Angel symbol real quick. At least I hope. And like I said on a previous episode, my my advice for doing freehands is to break it down into different shapes. So the Dark Angel symbol is very simply, a, well, let's do it on camera here, a cross like this for a sword. You obviously would define it more. And then you have two triangles. One here and one here, except the third Long, or the sub third side of the triangle is curvy. So that's your basic Dark Angel symbol. So that would be the basic shape you'd break it down to into a cross and two curvy triangles. So we're going to do the same thing, but on a smaller scale, on this man's shoulder pad. So we're going to start up here. And we're just going to draw a cross. This is still with the vampiric highlight color. Just going to do this. And then the cross. This will be our basic sword shape. I'm going to move this to this side. There we go. All right, so then we're going to do the curvy triangles. So for that, I'm going to start right about where the hilt of the sword is and just come down in a line. And then I'm going to go across, as you might imagine. And then just curve on down to there. So there's one wing, the basic form of the wing anyway. And then we're going to do the same thing over here. And you are drawing a flat shape, but you are drawing it on a curvy surface, so make sure you accommodate for that fact. At least when you're doing it on a shoulder pad. If you're doing it on the side of a tank, it's much easier. You can just you can just paint it flat, and all the lines are perpendicular, and it's great. All right. It's a little cockeyed, but that's okay. It's small. No one will notice. So then I'm just going to fill in the wings here. It's actually a thing, general advice I'll give to people. I just thought of it this second, but just because you can see your mistakes doesn't mean that other people are going to see your mistakes. And like I said on the last episode, or maybe the episode before, um, that I got from Vince Venturella, who's a YouTuber, a uh, professional painter, and who got it from his wife, um... Perfect is the opposite of done, which I think is a great set of advice. So if you can see your mistakes, that's fine. But chances are other people won't be able to see them. Just thickening up the sword here. Give it a little more of a point down here. So, yeah, I mean, if you get done with something and you're like, oh, it's full of mistakes, I hate it, blah, blah, blah. If it's done, then it's done. Obviously, if there's a glaring mistake, like if I just swipe a line of white across him, you want to fix that. But the the Dark Angel symbol being a little cockeyed, that's not a, not a mistake worth fixing in my head. Because if someone's looking to see if your chapter symbol is cockeyed, they're a butthead. I'm just going to say it. They're a butthead. This is, of course, for tabletop quality. If you're painting for a competition, absolutely. Make sure your symbols aren't cockeyed. But for tabletop, it does not matter. All right, so there's the basic shape. And then I'm going to take our Corvus Black that we used earlier. 
And I'm just gonna do the lines. I'm gonna clean up the sword and I'm gonna do the lines that are in the wings of the Dark Angel symbol. So I'm just gonna start in the middle. And I'm gonna go swoop. And one here. And one there. Make that one a little bigger. Make this one a little bigger. And make this one a little bigger. And then we might have to come back and clean it up with the white, and that's okay. We will do that. It's going to sharpen the edges of the sword here. And then do it on this side. And then thicken them up a little bit. Won't oh, stay on camera. Stay on target. All right. So there's the basic symbol. I messed up in a couple places, so I'm going to go back into the white. And I'm just going to cover that little dot we did there. And bring the white back down here. Better. And then grab the white and come down here. I think this one got a little too thick, so I'm going to sharpen it a little bit. And then there's some white up here. We're just going to move that into line with the rest of it. And there's a basic Dark Angel symbol. Is it perfect? No. But, sitting on the table, you can easily tell that it's a sword with two wings on either side. So then with that... Nope, we're not quite done. I lied. We're going to do some grenade work real quick. He's got a couple grenades. I'm going to grab some Plague Bearer Flesh contrast paint. It's a good grenade color when it's over silver. Make sure it's shaking up really well. And I'm just going to cover this grenade here with it. I'm going to cover the one below it also. Making sure not to get it in places we don't want it. And then he's got a grenade over here. Do that one too. All right. And then I think we could call him done. I'm just going to do a time check real quick. See what time it is? 44. All right, we got time, so I'll keep going. I'm going to then take Skeleton Horde, contrast paint, and I'm going to put it on the purity symbol, purity seal, that one, purity seal. Um, pretty thin, didn't wash, or didn't uh, get all the water off my brush before doing this, just to give it a little bit of contrast. like that then I'm gonna do his eyeballs uh, so we put the little white dot in there earlier now I'm gonna take Talisar blue and I'm gonna coat the whole eye lens with it just being very careful not to touch anything else I'm just gonna come in and do the whole eye lens just like that Wow, you can barely see that on camera. Well, I promise you it is blue. And do the same thing over there. Maybe. There you go. So there's the islands is done. Um, then I will take some Nuln Oil again. Nuln Oil. And I'm going to do two things with this. I'm going to shade the wax on the purity seal with this, just like that. Just so that in the middle is a darker spot there. Not too dark, though, so I'm just going to pull some of it out. And then, with my very tiny brush that I used for the checkerboard, I'm going to take this Nuln Oil, 
and I'm going to do some lines across the purity seal with it, like text. I'm using null oil because it's very thin, and it's so it will appear like words, very tiny words that have been written on this purity seal. I'm going to go across like that. Do a couple more. And then do one or two down here on this one. Ooh, too much. That can happen sometimes. Just pull it back off with a wet brush. Go back in. I think I'll just do one down here. And just do a light one there. So there's some text on our purity seal. And then I'm just looking to see what else we could possibly do. There's all sorts of, oh, we can highlight the bags real quick. So I'm going to take some Steel Legion Drab. If you ever need a, a triad for leather and you're not using contrast paint, uh, Gorthor Brown on the base like we did, Null Oil over top, Edge Highlighter Dry Brush Steel Legion Drab. Makes, in my opinion, a great leather color. Alternatively, you can just throw some contrast paint on it and call it a day. But we're not using contrast paint with this miniature, so... Just taking a, well, not a lot of it anyway. I did use some, but for its main colors, we're not using contrast paint. I'm just edge highlighting here with this small brush still. Edges of the leather. I'm going to highlight this little clip or clasp here. Just do that. Same thing over here. Oh, yeah, and I remember there's a mistake back here that I want to fix real quick. There's some gr or some Gortho Brown on his armor plate there. So we're going to fix that. I think I'm going to fix it with an edge highlight. You always have a choice between when you want to fix stuff between painting over it or removing it and working it into the into the overall design. In this case, I'm going to work it into the overall design because I think it'll be easier. So I'm going to use some Mechanica Standard Gray again, which is our edge highlight color. And I'm going to take the medium sized brush this time. And I'm just going to edge highlight this spot right here that has some Gorthor Brown on it. Just like that. And then I'll highlight these other two armor panels with it. Just like that. And then since we're back here, I'll give these a little highlight with the side of my brush. Like that. Do the other ones. And then I'll do the bottoms of these exhaust ports, I guess they are. Just like this. With that same color. And then with that, I think we'll call it a day. So yeah, turned out to be a Dark Angel. I'll break it to you. I knew it was going to be a Dark Angel the whole time. Um, I just wanted to to keep it a little bit of a secret. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's an easy way to paint black armor. Dry brush, null oil back over, a couple little highlights, and you're ready to go. So uh, thanks everybody for watching. On uh, Wednesday, I will be on the main galactic channel streaming something board game or D, D related and then i'll be back on friday painting more warhammer right here in this group thank you everybody for watching and i will see you next time